In the previous lesson, you studied one of the best-known early evolutionists, Jean-Baptiste Lamarck. In this lesson, we'll take a look at how Lamarck's theory of evolution holds up to the Darwin-Wallace theory of evolution by natural selection. If you remember, Lamarck stated that this first giraffe would acquire a longer neck to reach the leaves of the acacia tree, and therefore pass it on to the next generation. But Darwin's theory of natural selection stated that if you're born with an unfavorable trait, then you end up dying. And if you're born with a favorable trait, then you end up surviving, reproducing, and passing on that trait to the next offspring. Lamarck also stated that through spontaneous generation, dead matter turned into living matter, and these simple organisms strove to perfection over time. But that's kind of silly, isn't it? Frogs will never turn into beavers, and beavers will never evolve into cows or humans. Instead, Darwin thought that we all have a common ancestor, and throughout time, these ancestors diverged to give us the variety of species that we see today. Lamarck also stated that organisms wanted to develop new traits. While Darwin stated that the environment is really what selects which traits can survive and which traits are selected against. The last part of Lamarck's theory stated that if you use a trait, it'll end up developing, and if you don't use it, it'll disappear. So if a mouse doesn't use its tail, its offspring will be born without tails. But you and I know very well that this isn't what happens. You learn that in a heredity unit, that it's your DNA that codes for the proteins that controls your traits. So if you pass down your DNA, your offspring will also display those physical characteristics, whether your parents use them or not.